So everybody, it's Amon here. Welcome back to another one of my versus battles. Hope you guys are having a great day. Not nah, hopefully it's correlated today to a bigger thing. But either way, as you see by the title, this is Zanhu versus Kensei. With Zanhu in this case, where or your by your case of perception, we're using the male version. The female version technically counts as not a super big peak overstanding difference in the case of matter for the characters. But their plain plan power still holds a place by some matter of scaling. As in Zanhu and Sunda by lore holding a similar impactment of the same scaling. There's a little bit of difference in the bigger regards, but overarchingly they're the same. I am generally in baseness using the male version, with in this case being Zanhu versus Kensei, as in the male. Again, it doesn't make that much of a radical difference, but we're using the two male swordsmen generally in the priority of this case of the fight. These two great dueling warriors, two warriors that are swordsmen of cunningness, precision, like Daimyo. One being based of the Jinwi, if I'm even saying the name right, Jinwi, Jinwi, however you say the name. The most a case of the Zanhu being based off of, even from the front of Wiki, and quote, the Zanhu are very likely based off of the Jinwi, lit. Brocade, clad guard, the Jinui, were the Imperial Secret Police and later a military body that said the emperors of the Ming Dynasty in China. So, with that being said, they correlate with end quote as well with there because I'm getting more of this little quote thing. But, with that being said, they hold a great state and matter in place of historical relevance and place of power. And obviously, Kensei's are based off a of daimyo as they project that same place and feel in what they do, especially in all accounts, they are in place of daimyos. And the feel of a daimyo is what they kind of class themselves as in their own right. What they represent does not matter in this case, it's more about kids and fight. I'm just saying, like, in a place of historic relevance in the case of characters. Hope you guys will enjoy. Again, hope you guys are doing good. When kids out for your day and whatever might possibly happen. Hope y'all will enjoy this. Like I've said before, this video has been a long time away. I wanted to talk about this ever since the case on my For Honor tier list with power scaling. I hope you guys will enjoy, like I said before, and this buys of your day more properly. Let's go and get into it, though. Starting off first with the great swordsman Zanhu. Zanhu, like in the case of what he's based off, is a imperial god intelligence person for the emperor of China from a general classification of what they stand for. The general main case is Zanhu. Zanhu was a great swordsman, an inventor in different places, styles, and a coordination for his capabilities with his techniques and what he did in different efforts of his martial arts and military personnel. He is Tibetan descent, being coming with a little bit of Mongolian blood, of him having a mixed family and spending his time for the ranks of the top swordsmen in China for the dynasty military, with the different skills in place them of his mixed family in place with Mongol tactics, imposing different fighting styles in the case of swords play with different Chinese warriors into his mix up. With the case of his mix-up and capabilities as well, he also grew fascinated with fire as it is a plantation of a warrior spring of fighting and wanted to use it in multiple different case of tactics, using different fire flasks, mixed in the case of guns, like in the case for the pirate hero, but instead, instead of using it in the case of gunpowder, it was impacted in the form of mixing it with different knives, with shuriken type of things, arrows, other different fire plants, but then he grew more entangled with it 
becoming more like El Diablo and craving of it and becoming a gangster with this fire. Not actually doing hood rat shit, but more in the state of gravitas and the plain points of fire that he correlated in his own gravitas with making it work. As with his work and making this stuff, he wanted to make it to the fullest. And so, he pursued the mystical arts of pyronecracy, of using the mystical arts to empower himself with fire and making it in different flair and gas of his capabilities and what he can do in all the wrench and power source. With these capabilities, he's able to advance his normal strength and attack potency to big higher scales and mixing it with the same effort as martial arts and source play capabilities, obviously over your case of power for a normal human with him having super to meta human capabilities that amount of mixing in different radiant power placement a power of fire just by itself in the scientific has to able to charcoal a good portion of a person's body blaze out fire like a firebender and then pose with the case of his mystical arts and different accounts he just had this flare of fire born with him he's able to flake off fire like a good hydrogen fire flamethrower in a way by blazing it in between his moveset and corporation of things like palm strikes blaring it out with two fingers making like a gun not in the same extent like the pirate hero but as a blaring flamethrower and a high pollution case of weaponry as with this mix he's able to violently pursue anybody blitz and be sundowning on anybody that gets in his way He's like the god of fire when he does that, and it's pretty much a blare of Agni's fire rap. The other capabilities that make him have his great strength is impounded with how he uses it in feats, and there are correlation of feats he has compacted from obviously his other impact in cases of scaling. With a mix for his speed, mixing hydrogen within this, obviously in blaring off portion of fire and what he can do like a flamethrower this is only an attack potency and his hyper capabilities and moving and strifing within his sword with what Zanhu's sword is like it's kind of like Kensei's sword so they have an even place of range for how they will use it he can pend it off on people with pokes different strength movements to try to get in, clothesline and cut out, and having this dial-like grip, he's able to bend and circulate it and circulate the fire, and a bendy, again, like firebender stature in the same matter for how he's able to blare it off. Like in the case of the pirate hero that has came out, he's obviously not out here flame yoursting gunpowder, but like in the case for a gun, he's radiating fast, speeding like bullets, not in the same blare form, as obviously he's not having bullet like case of guns and not having 16th to 17th century like fucking bullets but to this high cases abilities with fire and blaring them off with shurikens fire and imposing with in case of his arrows and stuff he's having having capabilities of hydrogen capabilities and fighting and as a swordsman in comparison like i said and quote to my power scaling video from the tier list with Zanhu and Kensei, I explicitly explain, obviously, that in the swords fight, Kensei and Zanhu are overrolling in the same category, but one having a little bit more pinnacle, same after range, as Zanhu is a little bit better servitude and poke range and capability to move different in different categories, having a little bit better play skill. But they're even footed as swordsmen and pound within the case of their capabilities with feats and different stuff. Obviously, there's different things to be hard, but I'm not even talking just like feats and a company counting with Zanhu's power and able to flame on and boost power like that. That's what we'll be taking into credit. We're taking into both halves of the argument. So I'm obviously giving the overarching scale placement for Zanhu's capabilities and instead of matter for what he can do in the form of fire. But in the pores for capabilities, hand to hand slash swordsman, can stand for both martial arts categories. That's all different placement, but imposing when the factor of obviously their blades is both being swordsmen, one being samurai and Chinese warrior. They both hold a place and category in comparison to each other. It just depends how they put together their capabilities in comparison. With his fire capabilities radiating that off, that means a lot, not just in the set amount of putting it together with shurikens, arrows, and most importantly, I'm going to get to his last feat, this Blair Sundos move where he's over here pulling a human torch. 
He's able to blare great fire blows like bullets, like I said, and move at great speeds with them and catch people lacking in multiple different categories. And most people can't overstep a lot of tyke of how he can do things with these moves. Obviously, this stuff is mystical to just radiating superhuman. So being able to burn a human to complete ash and put them on great fire beast in the quote to key issues. Obviously, within quote, with my boy Key Issues, appreciate to him. Go check out the channel, obviously. I appreciate him for the information. That puts him at that highball. Now, that's not him just overrating it at a general case of highball scale, as he's not over here giving out so much great lineup of firepower that does that. His heat wave power is a small portion, as he's not beaming out fire to that extent. He has to corporize his fire into different things to just tie them to actually make them be like little splinters when he's shooting an arrow he has that fire arrow and pounded with gasoline because he's doing that by the lore and intricate in case of just actual science him puffing that much fire off of gasoline puts him at a higher ball because then he would be able to break away different metals and armor by just splintering it in between an arrow and gasoline erupting that much fire and doing other things like that as well so pretty much with just a piece of arrow cool or anything along those lines he's able to push out so much firepower he's able to break up general different intoxicating of armor or even at a high ball break up ramparts with that as well there's a general arrow cool within the case of his arrow quick or wherever he's gonna have his gasoline and patches he's gonna be pulling out that much capability a power especially going into his last fee the sundown fee where he literally paces over the entire arena area with a big wave of fire he overdoses the entire area and every character on the enemy team and an entire dose of fire like i said and again in quote again two key issues to intoxicate a person's entire body to the point where they are human ash with fire makes small building level with that clear jewel and that compounds within his radiance so if he wanted to at a high ball could easily DOS can say with the firepower if he wanted to with that being said the only way Kensei would be able to survive this is an accounting factor for him being able to dodge it which generally with his firepower what he could put out there is no way especially in counting with no character able to dodge that move unless you are using a character with actual by encountering to the fire blaze superhuman speed or using some fee or measurement of some teleportation or some great blitz action roll where you're hacking to be able to move at that speed so Kensei is getting bodied and he's not going to survive he's getting disintegrated and son who is going to blitz through that wood and he is going to die there is no way he is going to live he is going to get disintegrated it is over for my nigga right then and there there's still more to be said possibility so this isn't just a one side dos because this video could be ended right here but it's more particular that holds a point who said a matter for what can be happening here so with the point to be said about his power capabilities obviously by what has been shown his power and overstep match holds different plate in some different cases for what he's been able to run up and power stability because his power depending on the case of matter for what he can push out in power and full form is depending on the course of action for how he makes it happen with the power of his fire and etc because of what that fire can produce an overarching push measurement so when it comes down to the lineup of that power generally obviously it's more in that case of matter but 
when it comes down to, like I said, and lower measurement density, he's only pushing out so much to be able to destroy somebody's armor and general cortex. He's not pushing out so much power, it overlays every person with that single adjust, because obviously, he's not pushing out power that literally is a firebomb at that same case. So, obviously, like I just said, it's bold like that, but... His capabilities are not in that same push. And obviously, if you guys don't understand what I mean by power scan sling, I'm saying that that's what his power can be in a hyperbole high ball, but that's not what his power is like in full course. His power, depending on the state of matter, is not in that same threshold. It really just depends on what you make of it in this overarching statement. It's just that his power, really depending on the case, can be formed in multiple different cases. It really just depends how you make it be in this overarching play for his power and push what that comes with that so overall small density and general class because he's not gonna just blast that out on kensei unless we're talking speed blitz he's easily eradicate him with just the fire bloom right there and not taking the same out for other stuff and the low ball kensei that can easily split him in half right then and there but in small quantity, it is going to be a great viable zone against Kensei in comparison for what he's able to do. So, in counting, Kensei, in comparison to Zanhu, has to make a counting on opening him up and sword play. To go on and provide in case of power scaling for Kensei, though, Kensei, aka the Damyo, the Samurai, Kensei is a high prestige warrior, a general warrior fighting for many different classes of the samurai to get to the top. A peak swordsman in Japan, and rivaling obviously Zanhu by the same matter of their calling into the war and by placement of their skill and both payment of the case of what their power has and overarching swordsman play and for what they're able to do in both categories of their power and overarching placement. Of capabilities in comparison to each other and what they're able to run up in power is only dear spirit into a case of the honor efficiency now if we're actually talking like an honor zone who has his great crib in the honor but cases on who what he does and his push is about to win victory and unraveling his power on foes that are not in the same plane of power like he is because on who would like to overstep everybody to prove a point that he has the best fire power than any person as he's obsessed with the accomplishment of power like he is a dragon because in the midst of war he breathes fire but with Zan Hu in comparison to Kensei about swords play like I said uh, even I don't want to keep cutting back on that because it doesn't change the point provided but they hold a great place in comparison to each other on the overarching scale Point for what they're able to do in comparison place with each other so when they're putting together their skill in comparison they both hold a good place in comparison but one overshadows the other a little bit said I'm after scaling place can say overshadows a little bit considerably a little bit on my tactic is intelligence and empowerment of his capabilities of efficiency to go more on sword play not to waste time can say obviously within the recording that you see here has great strifing opens up with his capabilities he swath with movement with a case of his kente the great a katana sword in this case kind of sound a little bit weird hold up <clears throat> I feel like I have something stuck in my throat. I need to get more water, but I feel fine. No, so I fixed COVID. Yep, cool. So anyway, going back on the point though, my bad for the case of this interruption. With this being said, is that with his movement and brothel other stuff coming with that in comparison, his point of movement is only engraved in some different high ups for how his movement is imposed and put into different places for an overarching shape and setup that comes with it. Because with his movement and strife, with his great Kenza Katana sword, he's able to split a person here and here and here and move at great frequency and speed than others in combat for his overarching pair of capabilities combine it together in these movements so with this being said kensei has a great speed understanding and capabilities with it and his reach is more movement for how he makes it count so kensei with that being said 
will be a very formidable foe as they both both do this in calling in case with their mixed martial arts capabilities not super are able to open up and category different capabilities of these mix-ups in comparison to each other in multiple different forms and are the best of their equalized factions with Kensei being able to best multiple different people and being the best proclaimed fighter of the samurai in many different years and overshadows a lot of the samurai said for experience and skill being able to best Orochis in different 1v1s. He's able to kind of keep up with Orochi in some different places, which Orochi in comparison to Shinobi has great sonic speed, says superhuman speed, moving at great heights quality of 120 meters per second. So, Kensei has a great speed height. Don Hu does, but the same matter of his firepower boosting him, so that won't be a problem. But his precision and compact and same matter of tactics hold a great play and purpose and point for how he's able to run up different correlation and comment of moves in this place of the matter. So, Kensei overall will hold a good place and balance point in comparison to the other places of categories that Zan Hu has and staple point for his power. But besides came out for skill with obviously his no dot she so I forgot the actual name for a second because obviously long can say like ton of sword because of the saying of the other saying for Kensei as a sword but Kensei as a being such class in this case which kind of the same matter for who he is as a samurai does play a place. Besides the skill and precision of the Nodachi, his capability in comparison with that, if we're talking other runs, the same matter for feats and stuff, we're going to probably take it to that now. Other feats and capabilities are showcased and really depend on the play style for how you play Kenta, obviously in the comment kind of they're being fighting characters, but how he runs his capabilities in comparison with Arsenal, different stuff, his quick precision, his armor is obviously wood, but has a great correlation of fighting mixed in with his protective armor to be able to strike off and move between hits. And so both of them sort of equal skill frontier with that. They're showing the scaling placement of both of them, what they can do. You can see by the gameplay, there's a good running pavement of both places of scaling in comparison with both characters. So with this being said is why it holds a great place and pavement for the play style that comes into play for how both of them will move and do different things as well. So to actually go into the full running scaling point, Zan Hu and Kensei are equal skilled swordsmen, both in the profound stages of skill and comparison will hold a good place in the capabilities to how to win in comparison. If we're talking an equal fill and consistency and scaling, they both have a capability to win, who I think overarchingly over pairs the best. I feel like Kensei because of his capabilities of swift understanding, his experience, his synergy, and correspondence for what he can do. Maybe in different frontiers and depending on the set amount for the area, there might be a little quick difference. I feel like whoever really opens a person up and gets them right precise hits will win. And how Kensei fights with a strifing scenario understanding and coming in with both great balance out armor and not just having Kensei a wooden armor and having them both quick with it, quick great style feel of fighters. That holds a great place on the battlefield for how they both will move and do different stuff. So I feel like Kensei can win that regard. Other state of comparisons, I feel like Zan Hu will pay us. They're not a cinema for skill in some cases, but in the compactment, obviously, is fire. And easily, as soon as he feels like full blasting and, and puffing him with three bang shots, because I'm pretty sure if there's not four or three people or even possibly more in accompanying with how he blasts out his form of area effect he is able to overput every being with multiple different shots of fire to the point where it's just oblivion after oblivion it's smackdown these niggas man they're not doing shit in comparison at the same time there's capabilities for obviously can say maybe to dodge but overall he doesn't have any feats that puts him at that place of regard. Even keeping up some stability with Orochi, not overwaving Orochi, doesn't put him at a higher regard. And Kensei is more of a leader front. He's not a super extensive fighter. He's obviously a warrior, like every other case of warrior and for honor. But his regard by feats and power scaling and consistency has never been being played within the case of actual fighting perhapsness because of what he does in comparison to someone like Zan Hu. Because again, with Zanhu not having four, three more, 
in here and how he particularly blasts off it's a back-to-back -back recension of fire put on one person and even with that how he does it he's able to puff out that much so what's to say it doesn't just over rack Kensei and Kensei does not have the capabilities to take on that all at once which for a great guaranteed he's not gonna be able to and it's gonna be donezo for him guaranteed by the time he even gets in that position to do anything else for the same matter of what everything he can do so in my opinion if we're talking consistency balance placement of skill can say wins if we are talking in everything in all place of regard John who wins not just in skill but in parallax with a fire he's gonna quick wet up size can say Kensei's not going to be ready for the Puff Blast, and Zan Hu is going to melt him, and he's going to be making fried chicken. No ratio is going to make my black Kensei look more blacker than he already is. But, I have a regard. I have a request if you would like to talk Pake into it. Because, I've never done this before. I don't want to pull an animation rewind, but it would be interesting. Give me more ideas. If you want to see another type of battle between Kensei and Zan Hu, that is just talk into a case... Of a 1v1 where I possibly interput the other warriors of the samurai and the woolen together for a total warlike battle like I did with Overwatch vs. Talon. Tell me in the comments. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Peace of mind. Tell me what you think in the comments. Love y'all.